in this video we are going to look at Griffith's transformation experiment. In 1928, Frederick Griffith, a British medical officer, was working with Streptococcus pneumoniae, also called pneumococcus, a bacterium that causes pneumonia. Griffith used two strains of the bacterium, the S strain which produced smooth shiny colonies and the R strain which produced rough colonies. The smooth colonies were virulent and they were highly infectious whereas the rough colonies were non-virulent and harmless. Although this distinction was not known during that time, the virulence of the S strain was due to the presence of a polysaccharide coat or a capsule surrounding each cell. The coat is also the reason for the smooth shiny appearance of the colonies. The R strain is genetically identical except that it carries a mutation that prevents it from making the polysaccharide coat. Occasionally, the S type cells can mutate into the R type cells and the R type cells can mutate into the S type cells. Griffith worked with 2S and 3S strains which have type 2 and type 3 coats respectively. The mutation of the S strain to the R strain is quite type specific. Meaning that if a 2S strain is mutating to a R strain, then the R cell can mutate back only to the 2S strain type and it cannot mutate back to the 3S strain type. Similarly, for the 3S strain type, if it is mutating to the R strain, it can only fluctuate between 3R and 3S and it can never go to 2R or 2S forms. Griffith injected the mice with different strains of the bacterium and observed their effects on the mice. When a live mice was injected with 2R strain, the mice lived. Whereas when a live mice was injected with 3S strain, the mice died. And from the blood of this dead mice, living 3S strain could be isolated. However, if the 3S strain was heat killed and then it was injected into the live mice, the mice was alive. These experiments showed that the bacteria had to be both alive and it should have the polysaccharide coat that is possessed by the S strain to be virulent. So the bacteria should have been alive and it should have the coat so that it is virulent and it can kill the mice. In his key experiment, Griffith injected the mice with a mixture of living 2R strain and the heat killed 3S strain. He injected them into the living mice and he found that the mice was dead. And from the blood of this dead mice, living 3S strain could be isolated. However, you have injected a heat killed 3S strain. Now, in this dead mice, he found that living 3S strain was present. The R strain was 2R type and the heat kill S strain was of 3S type. The living 3S strain could not have arisen due to a mutation of the R strain to the S strain. This is because a mutation of the 2R strain would have produced a 2S type and not the 3S type. Thus, the possibility of mutation is ruled out. Griffith concluded that some 2R bacteria had somehow been transformed into the smooth virulent 3S bacteria form due by interaction with the dead heat killed 3S strain. So this R strain interacted with the heat kill strain 
and due to this interaction a living 3s form was formed overall griffith concluded that genetic material from the dead 3s bacteria had been added to the genetic material of the living 2r bacteria somehow he predicted that some unknown agent is responsible for the change in this genetic material and that was a protein which was not true also griffith called this agent as the transforming principle if this video was helpful then please like this video share it with your friends subscribe to my channel and don't forget to leave us your valuable comments thank you